What's up my precalc people? Welcome to the final video for topic 1.12 over transformations of functions. We've already had videos over vertical dilations, horizontal, di horizontal dilations, vertical translations and horizontal translations. In this video, we're gonna combine them all together, looking at how the effects of combining all these different types of transformations onto a function can, well, work and all kind of come together. So first, let's quickly talk about the different types of transformations there are. First, we have additive transformations. Additive transformations can be vertical translations or horizontal translations. Pretty easy. Now, then we have multiplicative transformations. These are vertical dilations and horizontal dilations. Now, the thing that I like to remind students most is that when it comes to vertical transformations, it's always exactly what it says. If there's a plus five outside of a function, it's going up five, translating. If it's going a minus five, it's going to be going down five as a tr vertical translation. If there is a multiplication of an A value out in front of your function by four, you're multiplying by four. You're multiplying by a factor of four. That's going to be a vertical dilation by a factor of four. It's not Nice and simple. It's the horizontal that always kind of lies to you. It's the one you got to think about the most. So for example, if you have some horizontal translations inside of your function, if you have a plus four, you're actually going left four. If you have a minus four, you're going to the right four. Just kind of think of it as opposite. And then when it comes to horizontal dilations, you're not multiplying by your B value inside of the function. Yes, you're multiplying by B, but what you're actually doing to your X values is you're multiplying by a factor of one over B or or the reciprocal. Hopefully not too, too bad there. So to keep in mind, a lot of kids have questions about order. What are the different orders that I do the transformations? So when it comes to um, vertical versus horizontal, like we got vertical transformations, we got horizontal transformations, the order that you do those doesn't really matter. Remember, horizontal affects your x's, vertical affects your y's. So if you do transformations to your y's and then transformations to your x or vice versa, that doesn't really matter. But if you're just talking about the different types of vertical or horizontal transformations within that specific type of transformation, horizontal or vertical, then you do have to think about order. So first, we handle multiplicative transformations. So we handle vertical or horizontal dilations first. So if we're going to multiply by a value, we need to do that first. Then we handle any reflection. So if that value that we're multiplying by is a negative, we ought to make sure we handle the reflection. If it's outside the function, it's going to be reflection across the x-axis. If that negative is inside, that's going to be reflection across the y-axis. Then we handle our translations. Whether it be vertical or horizontal, they have to happen after we handle those dilations first. But again, if you handle all the vertical at first, that's fine, all the horizontal next, that's fine, or vice versa. But let's just say you're gonna say, all right, I'm gonna handle the horizontal transformations first. Then you do have to go in order, dilations, reflections, or, and then finally, not or, finally the translations. Okay, so here's a nice little, um, I'm not really of a graph, just kind of a quick explanation here. So, so first we have all of our values. We got A, B, H, and K. So remember, K and H are the translations. That's the additive transformations. So K is happening outside. That's going to move you up if it's positive, down if it's negative. H, it's going to move you left if it's positive, right if it's negative. Okay, that makes sense. A value of A out in front, that's going to affect our Y's by multiplying by A. But notice if we have an A and a K, we got to multiply by A first, then add the K. And then if we have that B value, that's a horizontal dilation by a factor of one over B. So we're going to multiply our X values by one over B. Then we're going to move by that translation of H. So if it's a plus H, we're actually going to go left H, which is minus H and so forth. So we see how we could take a generic point X comma Y and apply all four of these transformations. Just got to make sure that if you do the X and then the Y, it doesn't really matter, or Y first then X, because they are separate. But within, you got to do the dilation first and then the translation second. All right, let's dive into uh, several examples where we actually can see all of these different transformations happening at once and the different types of questions that we can ask you involving these multiple transformations. In this example, it tells us that the function f of x is a domain of negative 4 to 7 and a range of negative 6 to 5. The function g of x is given by g of x equals negative 3 times f of x plus 4 all minus 2. What is the domain and range of g of x? Now, in this function, g of x, we see several transformations. Let's actually take some time to list them first. Now, the order that you do transformation does matter if they're both horizontal. 
Like if you have a horizontal translation and a dilation, you do the dilation first. If you have a vertical dilation and translation, you do the vertical dilation first. But in terms of vertical and horizontal, it doesn't really matter which one you do first. So first, if I look at this and say, okay, what are the transformations that are to the horizontal? Well, I see inside is where horizontal transformations take place. I see only one, and that is left four. So there's a horizontal translation. And I'll do a little bit of abbreviation here just to make it faster. But a horizontal translation, left four units. Okay, that's the only horizontal transformation. Now I can focus on the vertical. Vertical happens outside. So I see a minus two, and then I see this timesing by three, and I see a negative sign, so I got a lot going on here. So first, I have to do the dilation first. So that is what the three is going to be. That's going to be a vertical dilation, and that is going to be by a factor of three. So that means that our y values are going to multiply by three, but because there's that negative there, that's also going to be a reflection across the X axis. And then finally, I see this translation as well. So I'm going to have a vertical translation, and that is going to be down two. Okay, so again, in green here, I have what's happening vertically, and then in blue, we have what is happening horizontally. So now we can think about my domain. My domain is horizontal. So my old original domain was negative four to seven, but that new domain is now going to be moved left four. So that's going to be negative eight to three. The entire domain is moved left four, so negative four minus four is negative eight. Seven minus four is three. Okay, awesome. Now for the vertical transformations, which will affect the range. The range was negative six to five. Okay, let's take our time and go through this. So. The negative 6 is going to get multiplied by a factor of 3, which makes it negative 18. But then that negative 18 is going to be reflected across the x-axis, making it positive 18. And then that positive 18 is going to be moved down to 16. Okay, not too bad, but notice how I took my time. Now for the edge of the range of 5. Okay, first it's going to get multiplied by a factor of 3. So that 5 is going to get multiplied by 3 and become a 15. Then it's going to get reflected across the x-axis and become a negative 15. Then it's going to move down 2 and become a negative 17. So order there really does matter. But believe it or not, this is not my final answer because range goes from left to right or, you know, the lower to the upper values. Excuse me, domain is left to right. Range is lower to upper. And it's actually reversed because of that reflection across the x-axis. So it should be negative 17 to 16. Again, it's got to go lower number to higher number. But that is switched because of that reflection across the x-axis. So make sure you make that adjustment as well. So pretty good problem there with lots of transformations in it. And we can see how it affects the domain and range. All right, in this next problem, we have this function f of x. It's not explained uh, explicitly. It's just a generic function f of x. But it has several transformations. Let's see here. First, we have a dilation vertically by a factor of 3. Then we have a horizontal dilation by a factor of two. Then we're going to move the graph up five units and then the right nine units. Okay, so I like to think vertically and horizontally treated separate. So vertically, I think is actually the easier to do because it doesn't lie to you. It does exactly what it's going to say. So let's think what's going to happen to this function f of x vertically. Well, we see that's going to have a dilation by a factor of three. That's going to multiply the outside of the function by three. That's my a value, nice and simple. Then we see it's going to go up five units. That's going to be a plus five on the outside of the function. All very nice and easy. All right, now what about these horizontal transformations? So we have a dilation by a factor of two. So if we have a horizontal dilation by a factor of two, that actually means my b value is one half. Because remember, you multiply by one over your b value. So if I'm multiplying by two, it means my b value must have been a half. So I need to have a one half multiplied in front of my x inside. But then I also have this translation 
write nine units, which means I need an X minus nine inside there as well. So uh, vertically is in red. I have the multiplication of three and I have the up five. Uh, in black, I have the horizontal. I got my B value of one half, which is going to cause that dilation of a factor of two horizontally. And then I have a minus nine for going right nine. But now keep in mind those parentheses are really important. A lot, of, a lot of kids will just write one half X minus nine like that. That's actually going to be wrong. We have to treat the dilation of the uh, factor of two, which is the one half, out in front first, and the X minus nine separate in its own set of parentheses there for full credit. So please be very careful with that one. All right, here we have a graph or, or a table where we have several values given for x and the output of the function f. And to be honest, I kind of made a small mistake here. So I'm actually going to add a value here um, for 10. If we don't have that value there, we actually won't be able to do one of these problems that we'll see in a second here. All right, so there we go. We got several x values and the uh, associated output values for function f of x. All right, now let's start with function g. Function g is taking f and it's applying several different transformations there that we see. All right, but the question really wants us to focus on finding g of negative 10. So what is g of negative 10? Well, all I got to do, just think algebraically here, is turn my x into negative 10. So since g is defined based on f, so we have 3 times f of negative 10 divided by 2 plus 5. All right, so now we have to go through the math. Inside the parentheses here, sorry, it's a little bit messy, but we have a negative 10 divided by 2. That's going to be negative 5. So we could rewrite this as 3 times f of negative 5 plus 5. Now we got to go to my chart to figure out what is f of negative 5. And f of negative 5 is negative 3. So I have 3 times negative 3 plus 5. Now I can do the math. 3 times negative 3 is negative 9 plus 5 is negative 4 for my final answer. Not too, too bad. All right, this next one is g of 20. So once again, to find g of 20, I'm going to plug 20 in for x. g is, of course, defined by function f with some transformations. So we have 20 divided by 2 inside the function and then a time stream of plus 5 on the outside. All right, so 20 divided by 2 is 10. And now you see why I needed to tell you what 10 was. So we have 3 times f of 10 plus 5, but then we could use our table to find out what f of 10 is. f of 10 is 7, so we have 3 times 7 plus 5. 3 times 7 is 21. 21 plus 5 is 26, so there is g of 20. Not too, too bad. All right, now we have function h, which is defined here uh, also based on f. Got a couple different transformations going down there as well. All right, so let's find h of 3. All we have to do is substitute in 3 for x. So we have 5 minus f of 3 minus 3, which is going to be f, or excuse me, 5 minus f of 0. Well, I can look up f of 0 right there. f of 0 is 8. So 5 minus 8 produces my final answer of negative 3. Pretty simple if you know how to use the chart. All right, one more to go here, h of 1. So once again, it's going to be 5 minus f of 1 minus 3. f of 1 minus 3 is f of negative 2. So I'm going to use my chart to figure out what f of negative 2 is, and it's 5. So I get 5 minus 5, which gives me a final answer of 0. So not too bad, but really just take your time and uh, focus on just making some substitutions. All right, now here we have a function f that consists of two line segments and a semicircle, and the domain of this function goes from negative 5 that we see right around here. Here's negative 5 to positive 4. So right there is our domain. Okay, so we want to sketch a graph of g on the same axis. So g is defined as f of x minus 3. So first describing, that's going to be a horizontal kind of abbreviate this, horizontal translation, right three. And that's it. So all of my points are going to go to the right three. So this point right here is going to become this point. Well, sorry about that. I made it a little bit wrong there. All right, to the right three is what I said. So this point is going to move to here. That point is going to move to here. This point right there is going to move over here to 3, and this point is going to move over here to 7. And let's also move the maximum right there, the, the top of that semicircle. It's also going to move over 3 to right there. So we now have this new function that looks like that. You can clearly see it simply moved right 3. Pretty simple. All right, in this graph, we have the, the exact same function, but this time we're doing some different 
um, transformations to it. So let's talk about what's happening vertically first. So vertically, we see our A value is 2. That's going to be a vertical dilation uh, by a factor of 3. Or, well, not 3, 2. I'm so sorry. 2. I don't know why. I look at the 3 in the back. Vertical dilation by a factor of 2. So we're going to multiply by 2. And then because of the minus 3 on the outside, that's a vertical translation. And that's going to be down 3. Okay, so all of my y coordinates are going to get multiplied by 2 and then subtract 3. So if I'm kind of keeping track of that, my y coordinates are going to get multiplied by 2 and then subtract 3. Now, what about my x coordinates? My x coordinates, okay, well, that's just simply going to be the value on the inside. It's going to be a plus 2, so that's going to be a horizontal translation. And that's going to be left 2. So my x values are going to subtract 2. So to all of my x values, I'm going to subtract 2. To all my y values, I'm going to multiply by 2 and subtract 3. So now what I can do is I can actually go ahead and do those transformations to these points. Now, you can probably do them in your head or, you know, some kids like to actually see it. So that first point there in the far left is negative 5, comma 3. So we say, okay, what is the new point? Well, the x coordinate is going to go left 2, so it's going to become a negative 7. The y coordinate, 3, is going to get multiplied by 2, becoming a 6. 6 minus the 3, because it's going to go down 3, takes me back to 3. So that point is going to become negative 7 and then 3. There it is right there. The next point is at negative 2, comma 3. So once again, the new point is going to be going horizontally, left 2. So that's going to become a negative 4. And then vertically, my y is going to be 3 times 2 is 6. 6 minus 3 is back to 3 as well. So negative 4, comma 3, there's that point right there. Uh, and then I'm going to do the uh, vertex as well right there. That vertex started out as 0, comma, 5. And, well, vertex, maximum, whatever you want to call it. So now let's see here. So the x coordinate is going left 2. So that's 0 minus 2 is negative 2. The y coordinate was 5. It's going to multiply by 2 and become a 10. And it's going to go down 3 and make a 7. So that'd be negative 2, comma, 7. That's going to be right up there. And then this point right here was originally 2, comma, 3. So because the horizontally we're going left 2, 2 minus 2 gives me a new x of 0. The y coordinate of 3 times 2 is 6. 6 minus 3 is back to 3. So that becomes 0, comma 3 right there. And then finally that last point right there is at 4, comma 0. So the horizontally is going to go left 2. 4 minus 2 is 2. Vertically, 0 times 2 is 0. Minus 3 is negative 3. So that new point is going to be 2, comma negative 3 right here. So here's that first line segment, here is that stretched out semicircle, and then here's that stretched out line segment there as well. Sorry for my terribly straight lines, but we get an idea that we see this thing was vertically stretched and horizontally moved as well, so a lot going on there. But hopefully you see it, right? And, and some kids could do it without having to find all the individual points. They can just kind of do the math in their head. I like to actually show the points. That way I don't get anything wrong. But those are several questions there that deal with combinations of the different types of dilations horizontally, horizontally and vertically and the different types of translations horizontally and vertically as well. All right, that's it for combining transformations. Again, we got four different types. Well, actually six if you include the different types of reflections, but those kind of happen simultaneously with the dilations. But hopefully you understand it all. I, I highly recommend watching all five of the videos, the two over dilations, the two over translations, and this one over combining them all to really get a full picture of all the different types of transformations that can take place through multiple different examples. So hopefully you watch them all. Hopefully function transformations isn't too, too bad. I know it can be a little bit tricky, but hopefully these videos help you out. See you in the next video.